Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Carbon here with a little video tutorial about how I go about recording in VR and get it as smooth as I do. I've been getting a few questions about that and I figured it'd be easiest just to uh, go ahead and uh, make a video kind of showing everything. So we'll get started with the basics, kind of go over my system, what it is, because your results will vary depending on what your system is. Uh, mine for instance is pretty high end, it's got a 13900K, um, 64 gigabytes physical memory of DDR5, 6000 megahertz overclock, and then for the video card, go ahead and got a Strix 4090. Uh, I do keep resizable bar on, some people turn it off. Again, results may vary, go ahead and uh, mess around with that if uh, you're not getting as smooth as you like. So I'm already up here in uh, my NVIDIA control panel. I have Digital Combat Simulator up for program settings. Everything is going to be default. I don't change anything here. So that is out of the way. The next item I want to go over real quick is in your display settings. Um, and that's called Hardware Accelerated Graphics. And I choose, at least for DCS and VR, to disable it. Any other game I decide to play or DCS on Pancake, I'll go ahead and re-enable it. But all you have to do is, on your desktop, again, right-click, Display Settings, it'll bring you this wind, uh, window. This is uh, Windows 11, by the way, so uh, 10 might be a little bit different. I can't remember anymore and we'll go ahead scroll down to graphics and then change default graphics settings and then right here's your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling again for some reason it doesn't play nice with VR uh, and DCS however in uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator it works great and you want it on for that why it doesn't work in DCS I don't know old engine something but I just keep all the, all these off uh, variable refresh rate optimizations for windowed games etc etc one thing that I do keep enabled though is game mode and all you have to do is a quick little uh, window search game mode um, and here we go uh, game mode on if you have Windows 11 it's kinda better optimized um, than it used to be in Windows 10 Windows 10 I'd keep it off but uh, Windows 11 it seems to be uh, just fine it kinda allocates more resources from your CPU uh, from what I understand alright let's go over uh, open XR settings real quick um, I do use the toolkit inside of VR I don't really change anything it's more of a view my FPS kind of thing so I'm not gonna go over that uh, but I will go over open XR tools for Windows mixed reality I do use the uh, preview runtime uh, custom render scale at 120 percent get a little more crisp feel and then motion reprojection I do always on um, mainly because it's the most fluid um, it locks me at 45 FPS however it does inject a fake frame so to speak so every other frame is going to be a fake one do the math 45 times 2 that's 90 so 90 FPS and it, it it's a lock solid I I don't ever fluctuate up or down for frame time for it. Um, if I do choose to turn it off, I get about 60 to 70 FPS or so, but it's not as smooth and the recordings aren't as great and there's a lot more jitter. The downside with motion reprojection is going to be the artifacting that comes with it and that's going to be um, caused by really fast moving objects, we'll say. Um, it kind of looks like a tear. Um, but if you turn it on, you'll immediately know what I'm talking about. Um, so my pain is your gain in that sense for the uh, smoothness in that factor. So I do launch uh, DCS in single thread, I guess, or legacy, whatever you want to call it, legacy open beta. Um, I do have a um, shortcut to multi-thread, but it, it's been nothing but bad bad news for me. I don't know why. I'm just one of the unlucky few where multi-threading is a downgrade from uh, single thread. I do launch it in OpenXR um, and how I do that is I go to the properties here 
and target. I add this little line right at the end of the exe, force enable VR, force open XR. And what that does is when I have my Reverb G2 hooked up and powered on and Windows Mixed Reality up, all I have to do is click on the icon and it'll automatically launch into DCS. No Steam VR, uh, but it'll be an open VR or open XR and it'll uh, launch right in. So I'll go ahead and open this up uh, real quick. This will be going into 2D and we'll go over my in-game settings. And then after that, we'll go ahead and hop into the meat and potatoes of this all. And that's going to be OBS and the filter I use to smooth everything out. All right, now we're here in uh, DCS. We'll go to settings. Um, so pretty, pretty easy, pretty basic. Uh, I have my VR settings already loaded. Textures high, terrain textures low. I'm not trying to see how detailed the terrain is per se. Civilian traffic low, water high, visibility range ultra. Sometimes I'll put it to extreme. Um, don't really notice a performance hit, uh, but I just keep it at ultra just to get a few frames if uh, there is one. Heat blur off, shadows low. Um, I don't really care for shadows too much, but I'll, I'll keep them low. Uh, blur flat shadows on, secondary shadows on. Resolution uh, 3840 by 2160, which is 4K. This is going to be important when we get to the DCS mirror. Res of cockpit, cockpit displays 1024, MSA I keep off, depth of field off, lens effect off, motion blur off, clouds ultra, screen space, um, in aliasing off, SSLR off, screen space, ambient occlusion off. Clutter grass, mid-range, forest visibility, forest details, scenery details, all maxed, preload radius maxed out, chimney smoke density, I have it off, I don't care for chimney smoke, gamma, default 2.2, external field of view, uh, default, I don't really go to F2 all that much, anastropic filtering, I max that out at 16 because that helps with like runway lettering and um, looking at things from, I don't know, eye level, I guess. That's flat. Hard to explain. Um, train, object shadow flat, global illumination on. Message font scale 1, scale GUI 2. Um, that's mainly for uh, when I do 2D on 4K. Kind of brings the F10 menu a little bit bigger. Rain droplets on, full screen on, cursor confined to game window on because I don't want to be messing around in VR and click outside the screen and click something else and now my mouse doesn't work. Uh, VR tab, enable virtual reality headset, used to have to click this on in order for it to launch into VR. Don't need to click it anymore so I just leave it off. Pixel density, I leave it at default one. Use mouse, uh, cursor confined to game window again, yep. Uh, IPD, so this is not the same as interpupillary distance, uh, the little thing you adjust in your VR, VR headset to kind of make your uh, vision narrow or wide, depending on where your eyeballs are. Um, the higher you go from default, the smaller the cockpit appears, and the lower you go, the bigger the cockpit uh, is perceived, so set accordingly. Use built-in audio device. Yeah, my G2 has speakers, and it's kind of a pain to put my headset over it, so I just use that. Bloom effect, MSA, mask uh, size default. I disable enable HMD mask because I don't want a crappy HMD mask on my mirror. Uh, VR mirror options, use DCS system resolution. This goes back to that 4K resolution there, so we want that. Mirror so, uh, eye source, right eye, uh, has a hemix in it, and I crop it to a rectangle. You can do left eye as well if you want. If you do both, it's going to look weird. I suggest just left or right. And that's it for that. Now let's go ahead and talk about good old OBS. This is, this is where the magic happens. Um, so... What you do first, um, I'm going to assume everyone at least knows how to at least set up a scene and then your source. So your scene is your main group of sources. You just need one scene for DCS. Um, and then I do, for instance, I'll go here, create game capture, uh, new, yeah, I name it DCS. Okay. 
and then I'd want to capture either a full screen application, I just do specific window, and then I uh, do the exe for DCS. And then that can be seen on my actual DCS uh, source right here, uh, DCS open beta. So whenever this window pops up, uh, OBS hooks into DCS and then will capture the mirror. Color space, this is mainly if you're going to uh, do HDR, I do believe. Don't quote me on that. All right, so we'll go to settings for output. Um, if I'm doing 2D pancake, I do do um, advanced instead of simple. So right now it's on simple and it, it, it works for uh, um, VR. Um, for doing my 2K, 4K videos, I do tinker around with it uh, for pancake. But anyway, you just uh, set your recording path where you want your videos to go. Recording quality, I uh, select indistinguishable quality, large file size. It, the, the videos do get pretty big. Um, hour and a half mission can go upwards of 20 gigs, uh, 20 to 30 gigs pretty easily. MKV recording format, I used to do MP4. However, um, OBS sometimes crashes. And... If it crashes, your file is going to get corrupted as an MP4. Whereas if it's MKV, it'll at least stop where you crashed and you'll still have all the footage before that. Encoder, it's just the hardware encoder NVEC, um, which comes with uh, NVIDIA GPUs. And that's really all there is to that. Audio, um, I do change this to whatever my VR headset is. It usually comes up as like USB Realtek 2.0. For desktop audio and then Realtek 2.0 microphone for um, mic for my uh, VR headset. Video, so my mirror is 3840 by 2160 p I do downscale to or 1080p, uh, 1920 by 1080. Downscale filter, I prefer this Langzos, uh, sharpening scaling 36 samples. Why? I, I don't know. I, I, I'm just it's just more preferable to me. I don't really have a reason. It's just what I like. And then uh, common FPS values, I just set that at 60. Hotkeys, uh, not a whole lot. I do have a push to talk when I do uh, record, and that's Control X, which I have um, mapped to a little program called Joy to Key, so I can use my throttle, um, my SRS, uh, COM1, COM2 buttons that'll translate it to a control X and it'll allow push to talk on OBS. Um, and that's really it for the settings in OBS. I do want to say if you are recording in VR, make sure you do run OBS. And this is important as administrator. Um, this used to crash all the time on me until I did that. Once I started running it as administrator, I have yet to get a uh, crash and all my videos have been turning out all right. Now, the, the secret sauce, so to speak, for the uh, smoothness, it's gonna be called a, f it's gonna be a filter, and it's called LKV Video Stabilizer. And um, what you do is you download a suite of LKV, um, different sh uh, filters, and it's just gonna be the video stabilizer. So where do you get the stabilizer? Well, you can just Google LKV Video Stabilizer to Google. It'll be this GitHub link right here, which I'll go ahead and open up. I will go ahead and post this link in my description for you guys so that you can just uh, click it and then come right to here. There's an installation guide, but I'll, I'll kind of show you how to install it real quick. So what we want is download the latest OBS plugin release. We'll click this link, and this will this will be the link I um, I'll be uh, linking. So then we'll go to Windows Zip, download. I already downloaded it earlier uh, for the purposes of this video. So let's see. Go to Documents, uh, Downloads, and it'll be in a encrypted uh, zipped up file. Uh, just go ahead and extract that. Extract all down to your uh, 
downloads, that's fine. And you'll get a folder icon without the little zip. All you have to do, open it up and copy this. And then you go to your OBS directory where it's installed. Generally, it's in your program files of your C drive. Go here, OBS Studio. All you do is uh, paste. I'm not gonna do it here, but that's all That's all you do. Uh, paste it, and then you should be set. Uh, Live Vision Kit is then installed. So, LKV Video Stabilizer. So, default smoothing radius is something like 10. I crank it all the way up as far as I can go, all the way to 20. When you do that, it's gonna cause a stream delay of 350 milliseconds, and we'll come back to this because we're gonna to have to adjust our audio for that. Crop is a default 5%. You can crop up to 10%, and uh, the more you crop, the more it'll get smooth per se, but the less actual um, field of view you have. Motion model, uh, dynamic F fine and homography, use homography, and then suppression mode strict. And that's all you really have to do for the filter. Once you do that, you are good to go. You are now set up, ready to record. You can have your smooth VR recordings. Hopefully, again, results will vary depending on what your um, system specs are exactly. But I do hope that this helps you out. So um, let's see. I got a recording from the other night here. A VR. Um, Wait, not. Chat. Oh, Getting guys, spiked. It's pretty smooth. Yep, you hit what I was looking at. Like Alright, I'm, I'm good. So, I hope this does help. If it does, please uh, leave a like, uh, maybe subscribe, and hopefully this little video here I'll get uploaded here soon. And then it, I'm going to go ahead and uh, upload Bogey Dope's campaign of Saber One Flight here in the future. I hope you'll have a good day, and we will catch you in the next one. See ya.